The fight sequence in the high school hallway is a great example of an all CG sequence. Everything in this scene was created digitally, including the characters and the environment, and as a result, gives us lots of opportunities to do things that we normally couldn't do if we were working with pre-existing photography. The process begins by producing a digital version of the set that matches the photography and other sequences. With the digital set in place, the director works with the layout department to design the fight choreography with simple representations of the character models. This layout becomes the starting template for editorial, and from there, the animation team begins the process of executing believable performances with real weight and physics. The lizard is a massive creature with brute strength, while Spider-Man is light, quick, and agile. The physics of each character needs to be convincing, and we need to sell each of their relationships to gravity in a believable way. This kind of natural animation is tricky enough of one character, but combining two uniquely different characters in hand-to-hand -hand combat is always a challenge. Not only are we dealing with the gross weight in physics, but fine details on a smaller scale as well. Notice the flexing muscles and the tendons under the skin. These volumes are manipulated by animators, then the skin is draped over that anatomy and treated as a simulated cloth material so that you can literally see the muscles flexing and sliding underneath. The effects team study lots of reptile references in order to duplicate the material properties of real lizard skin. It had to be loose and leathery, with enough resolution to wrinkle and fold in natural ways as the creature moves. Simulations are applied to the internal anatomy as well as the skin so that the volumes respond to external forces as well. Notice how the volumes jiggle and resonate at impact, and the collisions need to affect the environment also. A lot of destruction that you see, like damage to these lockers, were modeled and animated for a specific look, along with the damage to the walls, door jams, and other props, all of which ground the action in a believable way. Once we've fleshed the environment out with these high-resolution models, further details are brought out in the surface rendering. The posters and flyers were hand-painted, and ID photos of ImageWorks team members were substituted for the class portraits. Lighting played a key role in grounding this scene in reality and was artistically directed to support the story points, one of which is a power outage that gave us opportunities for dramatic lighting. A large window at the end of the hall became the daylight source to backlight the characters and provide bright highlights throughout the scene and light coming through the classroom doors broke up the interior and became a source to highlight key moments. Even emergency lights were used to accent the action. Because the sequence is completely digital, entirely new shots and camera work could be made even at this late stage in production. As an example, the director can take a shot like this chase across the ceiling, and with animation already complete, is able to design more compelling camera work for a series of shots that supports the action in a much more interesting and dynamic way especially when coupled with effects details like dust, debris, sparks, and atmospheric depth cueing. The final result puts audiences front and center in a dynamic balance between nuanced character animation and dramatic composition of light, color, modeling, and effects. As the first in a new set of Spider-Man movies, the creative team at Imageworks had the opportunity to explore an authentic interpretation of this classic character, guided by director Mark Webb's unique vision, which was faithful to the original source material, yet grounded in a realistic way. The Spider-Man property has been in existence since the early 1960s, and has become one of Marvel's most recognizable characters with a dedicated fan base around the world. When producers Avi Arad and Matt Tomac brought this project to Imageworks, it was important to everyone involved that we not reinvent the character, but capitalize on the true spirit of this timeless superhero. With that in mind, we incorporated the iconic action poses that define who this character has become over the years. Not only are we hitting those familiar poses from the comic books, but we're choreographing the movement in and out of poses so that the action flows gracefully like an aerial ballet, and the comic book panels become snapshots connecting our work to the source material. When we talk about authenticity in the animation, we're generally referring to believable weight, physics, and gravity. Although he's a superhuman, we still want to believe that our hero is being affected by and interacting with real-world physics in a believable way. In other words, he doesn't have the power to change the effects of gravity, but he uses his strength and agility to interact with gravity in unique and interesting ways. This is what we focus on in animation, and it's what ultimately makes him engaging and believable. The camera can be just as dynamic as the character as he swings through the streets of New York. The lens is often animated throughout the shot to achieve dramatically foreshortened compositions that have become one of the signatures of the Spider-Man artwork. 
The third part of the authenticity challenge was to construct a convincing New York City environment. All of the environments were constructed digitally from the ground up. All the buildings down the length of 6th Avenue were built to scale, including plazas and foliage and street lamps, food cart vendors and taxi stands, and all the subtle details that make 6th Avenue unique. With 6th Avenue in place, the streets were filled with animated traffic and the sidewalks populated with digital characters going about their business. In the end, the only thing that wasn't built as physical geometry is the matte painting of distant clouds. Mindful as we are about the history and audience expectations of this well-known character, we're still driven to push performances within those boundaries to produce an exciting ride for the audience and one that fans can truly identify with as well. In this scene, the lizard emerges from a subway station and battles with an NYPD SWAT team. The audience gets to see a completely digital character created by Sony Imageworks. In the Spider-Man comic books, the lizard creature is a result of experimentations by a well-intentioned Dr. Curtis Connors, played in the movie by Reese Ifans. To bring director Mark Webb's vision for the lizard to life on the screen, Imageworks artists first built a digital version of the production design maquette. Modelers and animators then infused characteristics for the actor into the lizard. Specific attention was paid to the shape of Reese's eyes and brow area as the artist layered more of his character's influence into our model. Research on real lizards and other animals was used to help refine scale details and physiology. As we looked to nature to help ground our creature in reality, movement and features were dialed and fine-tuned. Some of the less tangible details added to emulate natural creatures included creating the right balance of deep tissue translucency in the skin, matching the complex physiology that you can read deep in the eyes, and adding fine details of gunk and flakes within his scales so he did not look artificially perfect. The torn lab coat that remains on Dr. Connors in his lizard form contributes to the complexity and depth of the character. Imageworks artists were able to tear and tatter the cloth, continually responding to both the action in the sequence and the artistic direction from the filmmakers. Combining these details with dynamic movement from Imageworks animators and simulation teams is what brings this character to life. Ultimately, the Imageworks team endeavored to infuse greater depth and dimensionality into the lizard character through the study and application of authentic look and movement. Like many of the Spider-Man comic book battles involving the lizard, this sequence from the film takes place below the streets of New York. Sony Imageworks created the visual effects that takes us from Spider-Man's web trap in the sewer junction to the watery depths of the murky tunnel network. The first shots of Spider-Man were photographed on a set piece made to look like an underground sewer junction. This is where Spider-Man builds his web trap in an attempt to snare the lizard villain. Imageworks effects artists and animators convey the story points that web shooters don't work well underwater, and lizards are more at home in water than spiders. To achieve director Mark Webb's vision for the scene, a practical stunt cable network served as the basis of the web for the photography of the actors. Imageworks removed the practical cables and replaced them with digital web lines. To convey the director's story point that Spider-Man uses genetically engineered webs, Imageworks artists referenced polymer and silicone to root the design in the physical world. The strength of the web line comes from its continuous solid core, and then more fine barbed details give it visual interest. 
The digital material allows light from the scene to reflect and refract to give the web lines more character. The tunnels and water were extended digitally beyond the confines of the stage to further enhance the sense of depth and dimensionality on set. Enhanced by digital water effects from Scanline Inc., Imageworks also created a completely digital version of the set. When the lizard finally arrives, the entire scene is fully digital. This allows animation teams the ability to design shots with tighter interaction of the characters, camera, environment, and effects. Digital environments were also required in the part of the scene where our characters plunge into the murky depths of the sewer tunnels. Layers of digital muck were added to the environment to create the right sense of murkiness. The sewer tunnel environment is built to scale at 400 feet long. Our artist team studied footage from actual sewers as well as various underwater photography sources to better understand lighting attributes within the murky environment. To add authenticity, garbage from the streets was modeled and textured, then simulated to help indicate the strong current that our hero was fighting against. The subtle glow of the lights and limited visibility through the water contributed to the sense of danger in the scene. Algae and weeds softened the environment and kept a sense of movement along the edges and corners. Each time a character hit the side, silt is disturbed and whisked into the currents. The sewer battle sequence gave our Imageworks animation effects and lighting artists a great opportunity to realize the director's vision in a truly immersive environment.